Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to Orange Shirt Day. Canada is a great country. We have personal freedoms and opportunities that are the envy of the world. But Canada hasn't always lived up to the promise of freedom for everyone. Sadly, there is a time when our First Nations brothers and sisters were treated very poorly. And it's important as Canadians to recognize this fact and learn from it so that we can build towards truth and reconciliation with our First Nations brothers and sisters. I'm going to share a story with you now to help you understand what it was like for the boys and girls and their families as they experienced residential schools in Canada. I'll be back after with a short message. Shin Chi's Canoe by Nicola Campbell The morning sun was shining so bright Shishietko had to squint. She was on her way back to Indian Residential School, and this year she wasn't alone. Shin Chi, her younger brother, was coming too. Yaya, Mom, Dad, Baby Sholtetko, Shin Chi, and Shishietko were sitting together on the porch, waiting for the cattle truck that would soon pick them up. Dad, it'll be summertime when we come home. Can you please build us a dugout canoe of our own? Shin Chi said. My children, don't you like paddling with me anymore? said their dad as he pulled them close. We love paddling with you, Shishietko said. But we're getting way too old, and I want to learn how to paddle all alone, said Shin Chi, who was six years old. Last year, on her first day at Indian Residential School, Shishietko had been punished because she could not understand the English words. Then they cut her long braids and threw them away and washed her head with kerosene. And so that morning, before the sun rose, Shishietko asked, Yaya, can you cut our hair today? Afterwards, Shin Chi, Shishietko, and Yaya went up the mountain to put their braids away. When the cattle truck arrived, their dad tucked a tiny canoe into Shishietko's hand. My children, their mother said with tears in her eyes. If we could, we would keep you here at home. We would never, ever let you go. But it's the laws that force us to send you away to residential school. Yaya squeezed them so tight they could hardly breathe. We'll be waiting for you when you come home, she said. Then Shin Chi and Shishietko climbed into the back of the cattle truck with all the children from their Indian reservation. Dust came in waves, getting in their eyes and in their noses, until they could hardly breathe. It followed the truck like a snake all along the valley. My Shinchi, we will not see our family until the sockeye salmon return. These are the things you must always remember, Shishietko said, gesturing to the trees, mountains, and river below. At night, when you go to sleep, remember the tug of the fish when you and Dad pulled the nets in and we made smoked and wind-dried salmon. Shin Chi could not help himself. He looked at everything. The mountain with the trail that led to the caves, the deer in the field by their house. He memorized every fishing spot, the place where he caught the great big frog, the grasshoppers, the crickets, and the slugs, until the rattle bump of the cattle truck rocked him to sleep. Shin Chi was dreaming when he heard Shishietko say, it's time to wake up, my Shin Chi. When he opened his eyes, it was dusk, and all he could see was the dark silhouette of the church steeple. Remember, my English name is Mary, and your English name is David. And don't forget, we aren't allowed to talk to each other until next June. Shishietko gave him the tiny canoe that their father had made. This, my Shin Chi, is for you. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, be careful to keep it hidden. When they got off the truck, the priests and sisters said, Juniors and intermediates, stand single file in separate lines. Boys, stand here. Girls, stand over there. Then single file, they marched inside. That night, in the junior girl's wing, Shishietko wondered if her Shin Chi was okay. He was used to sleeping near his sisters. He had never slept alone. Down the hall, in the junior boy's wing, 
Shin Chi lay in bed wide awake. He held his tiny canoe safely in his hands. The sweet scent of cedar smelled just like his dad. Dad said the spring salmon come up the river first, then the sockeye come in the summertime. That's when we can go home again. Finally, he drifted off to sleep. They went to Mass once each day. That's where they learned how to pray. For half a day they worked, the other half they went to school. The girls did the cooking, cleaning, knit mittens and scarves, and they laundered and sewed everyone's clothes. The boys learned how to farm, do carpentry and blacksmithing, and three times a day all the children went outside to play in wind, rain, hail or snow. In the dinner hall, the boys and girls sat on opposite sides of the room. Brothers and sisters not allowed to talk to one another. They made up sign language to say hi or I miss you. For breakfast, the children ate porridge and burnt toast. Through the doors, they could see their teachers carrying steaming plates of bacon, eggs and potatoes from the farm. For lunch, they ate thin soup and dinner was hard buns with stew. For dinner, the teachers had meat, vegetables, and corn. The children were never given enough food. When autumn was over and winter arrived, the days were short and the weather cold. Shin Chi was lonely and he was hungry. He missed his mom, his dad, and Yaya. He missed Shishietko and baby Sholtetko too. He snuck out the back door and ran to the river near his school. He stood there with his tiny dugout canoe. Shin Chi could not help himself. He looked at everything. He listened to each crystal snowflake that danced down from the sky and fell on his face. He breathed the cool breath of winter until the land was covered in a blanket of fresh snow. Finally, when eagle song echoed through the valley, traveling just beyond reach, he sang his grandfather's prayer song and his voice echoed from mountain peak to mountain peak. Shin Chi placed his canoe in the river, knowing that the current would carry it safely home. Then Shin Chi made a friend. His English name was John. Little mischief times two, they learned how to steal food. In the orchards, they found apples. In the root cellar, carrots and potatoes. To their delight one day, they discovered preserved cherries only to realize that they had black olives instead. Early one morning, when spring had finally set in, Shishietko snuck down to the river. To her surprise, she heard her grandfather's song. Her Shin Chi was already there with his fishing line. I'm checking to see if the sockeye salmon are here, he said, in deep concentration. Not yet, my Shin Chi, but they will come. When the sockeye finally swam up the river, the dust rose around the cattle truck like a great big butterfly that followed them all the way home. Shin Chi could hardly wait. Shishietko, he asked over and over again. How much longer till we get home? Little mischief you, we'll get there soon, Shishietko said with sparkles in her eyes. When the cattle truck arrived at last, their mother and Yaya ran to greet them. Oh, my grandchildren, we missed you, Yaya said, squeezing them tight. Your dad is in the woodshed, said their mom as she hugged them too. This time she had tears of happiness in her eyes. Shishietko and Shinchi ran as fast as they could all the way to the woodshed. There they found their dad carving them their very own dugout canoe. Can you imagine being separated from your family the way that Shinchi and Shishietko were separated from theirs. They must have been so sad. Their parents must have been so sad too. This story had a bit of a happy ending, reuniting with their family and finding their dad making the dugout canoe they had asked for. But the story didn't end that well for most of the children who went to residential schools. Many were very seriously hurt in their time there, and others didn't even make it home. Let's use Orange Shirt Day as a day to remember also a day to pray, and a day to promise, to keep families together and always respect the rights of others. I hope you had a great Orange Shirt Day and continue to spread this message to your families at home tonight.